Hello and welcome back to Duke Scopy TV. Energy Strategy 2050 is an item not just for Swiss politics but also for the economy and society as a whole. As Switzerland looks to cut greenhouse gas emissions by a fifth by 2020, also phasing out nuclear power. Here to discuss this with me further today is Avonsol's Greg Stace. Greg, thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you. Now, Energy Strategy 2050, can you tell us a little bit more about this plan, please? Sure. So it's linked in with the European Union strategy, which is basically trying to say all of Europe should go off uh, fossil fuels by 2050. And so the Swiss energy policy is basically one where it phases out nuclear power in the next 20 years and very much pushes for energy efficiency and renewable energy. And so where solar fits into this is under the scheme called Swiss Grid. And this Swiss Grid scheme is a policy that is funded by all taxes on uh, energy consumed within Switzerland. And this policy has been in place for the last five years and is going to be renewed in about another year in the Parliament, in the, in the Federal Parliament of Switzerland. And so basically what they're trying to do is create a holistic solution to energy that um, both reduces the consumption of Switzerland, which is currently about 60 terawatt hours a year, down to about 45, so a big uh, reduction, and at the same time increase uh, renewable energy, which is a mixture of hydro, biogas, uh, wind, geothermal, and solar, into, um, uh, to increase that. And so, in essence, it's basically a, it's a holistic look at the market. It's a look at how Switzerland's uh, energy companies can move together because they're all currently um, not moving in the, in the same direction. They have different policies between the different cantons. And now they're really trying to say, OK, we federally will push down and, and promote renewable energy and energy conservation. Now, this phasing out of nuclear power is going to see a profound change in the way Switzerland runs its energy systems. As, as you've mentioned, it's going to become more reliant on solar power, wind, geothermal. But can these energy sources really make up for the 40% of electricity that nuclear power does currently supply to Switzerland? So the way the government's handling this is by having combined gas turbines. So that allows a little bit of fossil fuel into the Swiss energy mix controversial, but at the same time what it does is it allows for those very rare moments when renewable energies aren't able to, to produce the power. So I guess you also have to see Switzerland within the European scheme, so it buys power from the Germans and the French, and so we can use the other parts of the grid to be able to handle the ups and downs within the Swiss market. But what makes Switzerland quite unique is the hydroelectric towns, because these are the batteries of Europe. So in essence, Switzerland always has enough power for Switzerland because it's able to just pump power up at night, uh, excess amounts of electricity, it pumps up at night and then during peak hour and other times it then pushes it down. So of all countries, Switzerland is the one most capable of going off um, nuclear in, within the concept of 100% uh, renewable energy. But at the same time, it is also complex. And a lot of that complexity is, is seen now in Germany, where they're struggling to see, to handle the network, um, where there's a lot of wind power in the north and the nuclear power is going off in the south. And Switzerland will see a little bit of that. But at the same time, it's a much smaller country. It's much more regulated. There's lots of little pockets of renewable energy. And they often work quite well in together. It's not as though one power is going on when the other isn't. So um, I think the short answer is absolutely it is. And uh, particularly if we start to get towards a uh, mass solar, because then solar will be able to provide the bulk of the energy requirements during the day. And then all the excess energy can be stored in the hydroelectric dams at night. Um, and by the time we get to mass solar, we'll have some pretty good battery technology as well. We're also receiving reports of a new project in Western Switzerland. If we take a look at this, we've got three solar-powered floating laboratories that are going to be constructed, and they're being floated approximately 150 metres into the lake itself. Now, the idea behind these 25-metre rotating islands, if we take a closer look at them, they're complete with 100 PV panels of unspecified size. And the idea is to test the efficacy of floating concentrated solar power plants and also to see if this concept could be applied to typical PV solar panels. Is this sort of an example of how Energy Strategy 2050 can sort of force solar powered industries to become more innovative? 
Absolutely. And I think what's interesting here is to see where Switzerland's role in all this is. So a lot of this stuff is uh, thin film. Thin film is one of the technologies of solar. Um, and it's out of EPFL in Lausanne. Um, this particular project is one of them. And uh, I, I think we're really seeing, A, the role of Switzerland in, in all this technology, and B, the advantage of having a long-term stable government subsidy system that then allows people to be able to invest into research in this area. And I guess when we think about it, we can spend all our research money on researching into oil or into health, but in this uh, system, we can potentially create energy self-sufficiency for all of us. So imagine we were able to have our own little island, whatever that is, uh, and in whatever form that is, that was able to keep us energy neutral. I mean, it would be great to be not reliant on other people's uh, networks to be able to power yourself. Now, obviously, this is a long-term plan, but are we already seeing sort of short-term changes and immediate sort of attitude changes towards solar power? Yeah, I think very much so. Um, what we're starting to see is the what I would call the Bavarian effect in the northeast of Switzerland. So, whenever people cross the border near Germany, um, or whenever you fly into Zurich Airport, you can really tell when you've crossed the border because Germany has solar panels everywhere, and Switzerland, uh, the, the build-up is yet to come. But because there is a lot of this cross-border activity and people are starting to see it, uh, people their, their curiosity is being changed, and this kind of my neighbor's done a uh, philosophy. We're really seeing in our own sales, when one customer gets it, then they talk in the village, and then we can come back, and three months later, we get a lot more interest. So I think solar is definitely one of those network effect kind of concepts when people can see that it's both uh, financially rewarding as well as uh, good for the environment. And in many cases, it looks quite beautiful when you've got these old roofs that are being replaced, um, particularly asbestos where they get replaced by a brand new, shiny, um, self-sufficient roof that pays for itself within six to eight years. Um, I think we're seeing really quite a big uptake within the farmers, within schools, within commercial and residential. So absolutely, I think solar is getting a big new push from, from everywhere. Greg, thank you very much. Always great comments. Thank you. That's all we've got time for right now, but we'll be back shortly with more exclusive interviews. Goodbye for now. Thank <laughs> you.